He stole all my socks. Look at you, Tiffies. God. Billy, Billy, Billy. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm speaking to the one brain cell. Do you have it at this time? Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm a bit behind this week. Today is actually Wednesday and I meant to film on Monday and didn't and I meant to film on Tuesday and didn't. So we are getting a late start here. I have been pretty busy and I haven't actually been reading anything these past several days. So it has been weird. Like Monday I had my echography which that turned out fine. Like there's nothing wrong. Everything's all good. So great news there. Then Monday night we had d, d as well. Tuesday was the day I decided to go to three different English bookshops here, uh, buy some books, take some clips for a different video that I'm working on. So that took up like my whole afternoon slash morning kind of thing. And then here's today where I went to the library this morning. So like every day I've been out of the house doing things. So I'm a little tired. And to be honest, I still haven't read Les Miserables today. And after I film this, I am probably going to take a nap and then come back and read Les Miserables later and update you guys then. But yeah, I just, I needed to have an intro. I needed to get this started or else I might just go the whole week and not film anything. So I'm just going to show real quick the books that I got at the library. I grabbed Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I've always been interested in picking this up, but it was always out when I would just kind of glance for it at the library. So I grabbed this for just a little quick read one of these days. I have The Camelot Betrayal by Kirsten White. This is a sequel. I don't ask me what the first one's called. I don't remember. It's been almost a year since I read it, but this was always checked out. And I just, I never really feel like reserving things because I always just have so much else I could read. And this was finally there today. And then I grabbed Troy by Stephen Fry. This is the June pick for the local book club I'm in. I'm not really excited about reading this because like, it's a pretty big book, but I'm glad the font is pretty large. But like, I don't really understand what type of book this is going to be. So we'll find out with that. I honestly, I just, I just don't want it to be a DNF basically. So that's where I'm at with everything at the moment. I'm not exactly proud of myself, but I mean, it is what it is. And I'll see you in a bit. 
and I'm back. It's definitely been a few hours. It's just about 8 p.m. here, and I have finally read a Les Rob chapter. So this was a longer chapter, and it was pretty much a bunch of name dropping of all these bourgeoisie people and everything. And it's pretty much talking about how Marius grew up around this salon of just a bunch of old people. And there's one paragraph in here that describes the situation well. And because I'm just reading it and I'm just like, I really don't care. So I'm going to read this paragraph real quick. It's on page 533. And this kind of explains like the, the um, political alignment of these people, how they are. And this would have been Marius's experience with them. So because it refers to this salon, it was uh, Madame de T. It was her salon. And it calls it ultra. And so then it kind of explains that. So it says, to be ultra is to go to the extreme. It is to attack the scepter in the name of the throne and the meech. Uh, I don't know this word. The meet. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. In the name of the altar, to abuse the cause one supports, to rush one's fences, outdo the executioner in the grilling of heretics, charge the idol with insufficient idolatry, insult by excessive adulation, find the pope insufficiently pap papist and the king insufficiently royalist. It is to denigrate the whiteness of alabaster or snow or the swan or the lily in the name of flawless whiteness, to be a partisan of causes to the point of becoming their enemy, to be so vehemently for as to be in fact against. So that's kind of the environment Marius grows up in. And a few pages later, it talks about how he was sent to like a tutor when he got too old for his aunts to take care of. And he didn't really like his um, grandfather or anything. And it kind of describes Marius here as a bit different than I'd say the media portrays him, but it says he was a fanatical and austere royalist with little affection for his grandfather, whose frivolity and cynicism irked him, and with dark thoughts of his father. An ardent but reserved young man, high-minded, generous, proud, religious, impulsive, aloof to the point of asperity, uncompromising to the point of unsociability. I mean, it does sound like he would probably be a bit awkward, which I think is definitely how he is portrayed in the media. But I don't know, there's a few words there that they use to describe him where I'm just like, oh, okay, I think he's gonna be a little bit different here in the book than what we have seen, but obviously we will see that. Also, this chapter was called R.I.P. So I thought someone was gonna die, like literally like R.I.P. So I really thought I was like, okay, someone's gonna die and it's gonna talk about that. No one died. So not sure what that title was about. So that's where I'm at in the story right now. We just kind of got to see how Marius grew up. And now I assume we're gonna talk about him as an adult since so it just kind of explain how his personality is now. So I'm really hoping that's where we're gonna be going into it because I'm not really sure what year we're in right now. So hopefully it mentions that again. But yeah, so much has been happening this week. Like last night, you can actually kind of see it behind me. I'll give you a better view in a second. We kind of like all our Amazon packages came in at once and we don't order things often at all. So it was just so strange, but pretty much Joma had suggested us getting like this bookcase to put on top of this wardrobe so we could try to make more room. But now we literally have stuff going all the way to the ceiling, but also my new tablet came in because the one that I have been using is from 2016 and it's one that my dad actually won at a company Christmas party and I it was the one that I had gone with and he had no use for it so he gave it to me and it's definitely lived out its life like I mean 2016 to 2022 is very good literally all I could do was just have the Kindle app on it and I could download one book at a time because it would say there was insufficient space. Otherwise, it was crap. What's that word? What's that word, Toma, where stuff like bloats with where stuff where you can't oh, use it anymore. It's like planned to be planned that way. Planned obsolescence. Yes, planned obsolescence. It suffered from that a lot. So I had to get a new one and like the size difference. I'll show you. The size difference here is just ridiculous. Like this is the case for my old one, which I love and I'm sad I'm not gonna be able to use anymore, but like, look how tiny that is. And this is the new one. When I opened it up, I was like really super surprised. Like there's my hand for reference. Like this is like as big as my hand. 
Like, this is, like, as big as the freaking laptop screen on Toma's work laptop. Like, I'm definitely not used to this. It's super thin, though, and light. But, I mean, I'm going to miss this because this was, like, perfect for being able to hold and read. So, I think I'm definitely going to miss that. But the case for this should come in tomorrow. So, I'm kind of just not really using it until then because, I don't know, I'm just afraid I'm going to, like, scratch it or mess it up or something. But up here... Here's our new bookshelf. Uh, this, yeah, that here is all Toma's books. And they fit a lot nicer than mine. And we have our plushies and stuff, some clothes, and then some things up here that we don't have places for. And besides that, we also got this shelf over here. And that feather was originally on top of the wardrobe, so we needed a spot to put it. But we just have some like Pokemon knickknacks up here and stuff. We really want to try to start putting stuff on the walls, but we can't like put holes in the walls or anything. So we've had to come up with some creative solutions that actually work and hold things up. So hopefully we'll get more pictures up and stuff soon. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of show those things real quick because you'll definitely see them in upcoming videos and stuff. And I really wish I could use this as more of like a background, but since it's above the wardrobe, obviously I can't really do that, but wishful thinking. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Oh yeah. So I don't know if anyone is following the Johnny Depp trial and by the time this goes up, it's going to be long over, but in pretty much exactly an hour, they're going to read out the verdict. So I am really excited to see what that's going to be. I haven't exactly been watching the trial, but my husband has, so I've heard a lot of stuff from him. I've also seen quite a few clips, and my grandma is also watching the trial, so I've heard quite a lot, and we're all kind of excited to see how this is going to end. I have just finished reading my Le Rob chapter for the day. I can't really tell what you can see in the background, but Ori's freaking out with his fish toy over there. And so this chapter was a bit more of a depressing one. Apparently, Marius' grandfather never really ends up telling him the truth about his dad. So when his dad sends a letter asking him to come to Vernon where he lives to see him before he dies, Marius just really doesn't care. And he doesn't exactly get there quickly. There was like a, a better option, but they just never really looked into it because he did not give a shit. And so when he arrives, his father has already passed and he doesn't feel anything, even though there's people around him like sobbing and stuff. And I can see Ori's foot there. Are you bunny kicking? Yes. And so it's just kind of sad and depressing because like there's the priest there, there's the doctor, there's like the housemaid and they're all just like sobbing and crying. And Marius is just like, yeah, it's a dead person. I don't really feel anything. But like his dad had tried to like get out of bed and go to the door and being like, Marius is late, I need to get to him. And he just collapsed and died on the floor kind of thing. Like, and it's talked about how like his corpse just still has like one tear running down the cheek. And it's like, damn, that is a bit messed up. So yeah, Marius comes off as kind of a dick, but I mean, he doesn't know the truth. And I hate situations like that. I hate when family like lies about other family members to get a certain reaction or to prevent someone from knowing that family member like I hate those situations like that's just that's really evil and his dad had kind of left him a little notes and basically he was giving the titles that he had gained as when he was in the military even though they'd been stripped from him he kind of like passed them on to Marius but then it also says this and like I never realized how much the Thanatiers are in everything like this is ridiculous it says my life was saved by a sergeant after Waterloo his name was Thanatier I believe that recently he kept a small inn in a village not far from Paris Shell or Montfermé if my son should find him he will do Thanatier every service in his power and this is on page 538 and it's just like no don't go find him please like just just don't that would be great but then it says that like out of respect for the wishes of the dead he kept like that note and everything but it's like just please don't or at least please see through the Nadier if you encounter him because i don't really remember marius and the Nadiers doing too much like it seemed like when we had the time jump like in the movie for example that 
obviously Marius knew like Eponine and stuff and they kind of knew each other through that and it never really seemed like he was exactly like helping the Thanadiers or like fond of them or anything so I don't know but to show how even more depressing this is on the very next page it says the colonel was buried in two days and forgotten in three like it just sucks that his dad died like that it's so depressing but I assume that's what the R.I.P. of the previous chapter was referring to um, was kind of foreshadowing this one, I guess, but I don't know. I still feel like that was a title is out of place. So we will see. By the way, this is happening when Marius is 17. I think it said it was 1827. Let me double check. Where am I? Yeah, 1827. And I'm not sure what year we left Jean Valjean and Cosette in. So I'll try to remember and be aware of that when it finally shows us. But yeah, that's where I'm at in here right now just a depressing chapter overall. This morning I've been really busy in doing some cleaning around the apartment and stuff. But besides that, it's more of a chill day, like I'm not going out or anything. I mean, unless my other Amazon order arrives, but I'm not sure if it actually will or not. I have the case for the tablet that's supposed to come in, but I'm thinking it probably won't until tomorrow. And yeah, I kind of don't really want to do much the next few days. I'm a bit tired from everything I did at the beginning of the week. And then this weekend, Saturday I have a book club meeting, and Sunday apparently we're doing D&D, finally, the other campaign. So fingers crossed that ends up happening in the end. It is a few hours later, and I just got my uh, coin book in the mail. Here, I don't know if it's a Euro just a European thing or what. I know at least the UK does it as well, and I got some coins in Sicily as well. But France is really big on for tourist attractions. There's like a little coin that has like the museum on it or maybe what the exhibit was on it, like things like that. And I collect those whenever we go to museums or wherever, like Arc de Triomphe, Eiffel Tower, anywhere like that. And I have never had a book. They've just kind of been in a drawer because I had nowhere to put them. And I'm going to try to show them off a bit right now. So we'll see how that goes. So here's the book, and I'm kind of trying to be by the sun so you can see better. So I have like the museums and the like tourist uh, destinations like catacombs, Notre Dame, Before the Fire, Arc de Triomphe, Sacre Coeur. Uh, this is from the zoo, uh, Tour Montparnasse. And this is also from Montparnasse, I believe. And then just some like general Paris ones, uh, Disney. And this is from when we went to see Claude Monet's garden in Giverny. Uh, these are ones from Toulouse. All of these are. Then this is the start of the ones from Poi de Fou, which is that um, like amusement park we went to for our honeymoon, as well as the first weekend of May. And these are all more Poi de Fou. This is the one I have from the UK. It's from the aquarium there. As you can see, it's very different from the other ones. This is just a duplicate I have. And then these are the three from Sicily, Palermo, Catania, Palermo. And here I'll show the beginning again. And sometimes they have stuff on the back, but usually it just says this. So it just kind of depends on where they come from. What was this? Musée d'Orsay, Angeri, um, the Clooney one, Louvre, Louvre, the Key Branly. Petit Palais, Conciergerie, Hotel de Ville, Chateau uh, Fontainebleau, Saint Chapelle, Versailles. So, like, all the places we've been to, it's really, really neat. But also, like, this thing is freaking hefty. That is, that has some weight. But yeah, I really love these and I love collecting them, and I finally have a book for them. Hey, yo. So. I am not feeling the greatest today. I've pretty much been in bed for most of the day, kind of dozing off and on and just reading. So I just finished my chapter of Les Miserables for the day. And vindication! Marius gets to actually find out about his father. The uh, chapter title is also really interesting. It's like uh, how attending mass may create a revolutionary and pretty much Marius he's very religious right now and so he still goes to the same church he did growing up and everything and one day he accidentally sits 
in the seat of this older man and after the service the guy is like hey i don't want you to think i was rude i just like sitting in this spot because i used to watch this guy um it was the only way he this guy could see his child and so i would see this man basically like crying over not being able to contact his kid and everything and marius is just like what and so he finds out about how much his dad actually loved him from this old man and how his grandfather and aunts had kept him away and stuff i guess he kind of walked out of the church like arm in arm with this guy and is going to find out more so this is this seems to be how marius's attitude kind of changes because like i said before the description of marius seemed like he's kind of like a dick a bit and was different from how we know him what the heck was that noise of how we know him in the media so i think it's interesting to kind of see this character development and how he's actually becoming how we know him like in the movie in the musical and stuff and so i am interested to find out what happens from here and what information he learns and stuff and what exactly because obviously this is going to trigger his kind of change in attitude but i want to know like what else adds to that as well so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Not much happening today. I am also currently reading uh, this book right here. I'm in the middle of The Island of Dr. Moreau. So I'm probably going to try and finish that today. And I might sleep a little bit more, to be honest. Like, my head is killing me. My eyes don't want to be open. And it is a really gray and rainy day here. So yeah, I'm not feeling good and just don't have the motivation to do very much. I was hoping this wouldn't be so backlit since it is so dark outside, but it literally just looks like I'm being abducted by aliens or something. But it's been thundering and lightning for at least like the past 15 minutes and it's finally starting to sprinkle. So I just kind of am sitting here waiting for the storm to start. I wonder if I do this a bit, if that would be any better. No, not really. Okay, well, anyway, I, if I can grab this just finished my chapter in Les Miserables, what is on my hand? Um, and Marius is essentially doing... Anyway, and Marius is essentially doing what like everyone in America needs to do right now. He is pretty much learning the truth about like France and basically everything he's ever learned. He's just like, I'm going to the library and I'm going to read about history. And so like through that, he discovers like everything he learned about his dad, uh, the revolution, France, has just been untrue because his education just came from this echo chamber of his aunt and grandfather and people like them. He has not interacted with others that have different opinions. So his entire world is just completely opening up and he is now a revolutionary and I, I love to see it because it's just like yes this is literally even today what people need to do you need to freaking educate yourself like freaking read find out what the truth is learn from more perspectives than just those around you so that was fun to read about and see that I guess change in Marius and how he becomes the character that we generally know him as and Victor Hugo even talks about how like Obviously he didn't change overnight, like this happened like a gradual over time. His aunt and grandfather are basically just like, where is he going? Why is he gone all the time? Like what's going on? They think he's like in love with someone and has like a mistress or something, but that's really not the case at all. And at the very end of the chapter, he freaking goes to find Thenardier, but the inn is closed and they are nowhere to be seen, which Thank God, because I really don't want him getting tangled up with them. But I assume they've gone to Paris, because I know, obviously, in the musical and the movie and everything, all of a sudden they're just kind of there with the other characters in Paris. So I'm assuming that's where they moved to. And also, I know, like, in the movie, Marius knows Eponine, just kind of out of nowhere, just from the time skip. So I wonder if that's kind of what we're going to find out next because the next chapter is called the wench and it's just kind of like eh, i don't like the sound of that so i'm not sure what's gonna happen there but we will see so that's where i'm at right now 
Today was supposed to be my book club meeting, but that ended up not happening. It is pushed back to next Saturday, and tomorrow we will be playing D&D. So that's pretty much the end of this weekend. It's supposed to storm, like it's gonna start soon all weekend. And let me see if I can actually show how dark it is outside. Okay, I guess you can't really tell, but the sky is all gray and I'm really just waiting for it to start downpouring and I really can't wait for that to happen. And I saw lightning and was hearing thunder for like 15 minutes straight, so I hope it's not just going to pass us. I really want a thunderstorm. But anyway, thank you for hanging out with me. It is always appreciated. And until next time, bonjour and au revoir.